My neighbours have given me a huge pumpkin for a project I've been meaning to do properly for years. Go on a three day running and riding adventure and only eat one giant fruit. Keep it going, let's just keep the pumpkin party going. Everything is pumpkin centric. From where I go and how I feel. How am I, how my bowel movements. To what kind of deals I can wrangle. Do you want to try giving these a go? And all based within a map the pumpkin helped create. Oh. This might well be the worst cooking show ever made. I did a small Google search on various ways to cook pumpkin, but none of them are just with pumpkin. And an adventure that's based on losing any kind of intelligence I thought I had. Lovely. This is the pumpkin project. It would make sense that I, um, I go a bit orange in the next couple of days. Because <laughs> I need that. Need that like a freaking hole in the head, don't I? There's, it's been slightly rat chewed. There's been one rat that's tried to get in, but to no avail. But it's kept beautifully. This was pulled off the vine four months ago. I don't know, 10 kilos, eight kilos. Maybe I'll just stay in the barn for three days and do pumpkin reps. I was surprised at how many orange things I could gather in one spot. As a man with horrible fashion sense, I'd never been so fussy about color coordination of stuff. If it wasn't in the palette of pumpkin, it wasn't coming. Key to all this was arranging all the kit in Wes Anderson's picnic case. The other pressing job was figuring out where I was going. The point of the knife is home. I then drop that point on where I live. I then take the Sharpie. Oh, we have ourselves a bumpy outline. This is, this is sacrilege to do to a map. That's it, that's where the adventure's gonna take place. This is definitely lighter than Charlie. Is it? Yeah, and easier to look after. Yeah. <laughs> and it sleeps more. It this, doesn't squirt. It sleeps more than our child. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. This is a pairing knife. Yeah. I do everything with this knife. Because what will happen to you if your knife is lost? That's a good point, but I just won't lose my knife. I've never lost a knife in my life, so I just won't lose that knife. Except for the time that I accidentally had one in carry-on luggage and it was your really special favourite knife. Well, point being, I didn't lose it. You <laughs> lost it on my behalf. One, two, three, four. Like a lot of my adventures, I overlay some meaningless rules. The main one being that my only addition to plain pumpkin is a spice mix made by Helen and a specimen jar full of oil. What's currently in there? There's a few other things. Don't worry about that. <laughs> my bike had a deck on the back made from a canoe I renovated. This wasn't a rule, but it was mighty satisfying. And I'd leave my wallet at home, using only pumpkin seeds as currency. The rest I'd have to make up as I go, confined to the boundaries of a pumpkin map. Woohoo! Bye! I can't believe it! Away we go! Have fun! See you, love! I tried this years ago by taking a pumpkin on a trip and only eating pumpkin. <laughs> Just a pumpkin in the top. But I was a hopeless filmmaker on it. I, I got distracted because it was a work trip and I had to get on with being a guide rather than a filmmaker, so it was a crap film. Pumpkin project for three days. Coming through Jindy, there's the sign. Welcome to Jindavik, thank you. Thanks for welcoming me. My first stop is the local primary school, where I'll give every kid a pumpkin seed. I think that might be the first time ever a visitor has written in a visitor book, I'm here to give away pumpkin seeds. What do you reckon? Do you like the way I'm dressed? Yeah. yeah. You're gonna dress, safe. You're gonna dress like this when you're an adult? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> the pumpkin seeds are the real thing. You know, to go back to a system where you're not handing over money or favours, you're handing over something that could potentially be their pumpkin patch for the next hundred years. I think that's the most powerful aspect of it is a pumpkin seed. Do you guys even like pumpkin? Yes. Some people, yeah, not pumpkin. 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 Some people hate pumpkin. Like, he hates pumpkin. I was proud when they gave Brett a judgmental stare. 
Although I'll credit to him, for a bloke who despises everything about the pumpkin, his choice of beanie was inspiring. Happy pumpkin growing. See ya. Good job. Thanks, man. I've spent my entire adulthood trying to get off the tarmac. Onto the dirt, baby. Onto dirt roads or old roads or single track made by animals other than humans. Ooh, feel the burn up the hill. Yo, hello. I head towards the bush in search of a low point. Not to have myself an emotionally scarring experience, but to find a place underground. As luck would have it, my map has a cave. I'm sweating, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm sweating the freaking house down. I've run these roads forever. Never ridden up here, actually. I leave the bike, cut a chunk of pumpkin, make some weird jerky, and take off through the bush to find a hole in the ground. All right. So that's it, there's the cave. It's about 10 metres down, I think. Actually, that's a good point. How am I gonna get the pumpkin down there? Hmm. A pocket. Look at that. How the hell am I gonna cut my pumpkin up, keep it in my teeth? Right, I'm going down. I'm going down this first place. All right, pumpkin away. There's the river. Okay, I'm gonna sit here and have myself a picnic. Wow. Right oh. Eating raw pumpkin in a cave. Check. Put it in the pot for dinner tonight, eh? A little bit of an hors d'oeuvre for dinner. Okay, using up the map. Smelling like dirt, which I've always liked, I needed to head north into higher hills and a potential campsite. Behind closed gates meant greasier roads and more sweat. And my sunny disposition is not always sunny on these sort of things. Anyway, a bloke complaining about it to his GoPro, he's not getting up the hill, is he? Uh, this is earning your pumpkin, mate. Uh, oh, a lot of hard working sounds. Probably a reason why this isn't a bike touring route. My raw pumpkin lunch is sitting beautifully. Thanks for asking, it's bloody, no worries. I've had a couple of bugs as well. I know that's kind of cheating, but a few bugs have got through the old filter of the beard. Whooshaba! Hinch perfect, man. As a kid, I loved playing Tetris. This gate was giving me the same feeling. Oh, precision. I think I'm gonna outsmart myself here. Bugger. My bike's not gonna fit through that hole. I'll squirrel it around. <laughs> Jesus. I thought that would be a 12 second job. Easy, no, not easy at all. Oh f here's a path. <laughs> There's a path, I could have ridden that path. Totally al dente, al fresco, al nothing, nothing to it. Haven't put any of Helen's seasoning to it yet. It's freaking good. Yeah. Beautiful. I've just started to hit that point of being a bit hungry. And so the first three or four bits of pumpkin just went down, burning the hell out of me because I was just in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs>
For about a decade, I've been fascinated by the emotional and physical potential of food. Particularly when I only eat one thing. I did this with tin beans for 40 days and came out the other side like I was born again. 144th tin. What occurred to me was that I'm an eaty, which I think is the opposite to being a foodie. To me, food is about what it can make me do, and in some ways less about what it tastes like. And I'm lucky. I like bland. Bland is the perfect accompaniment to a place where the rest of my senses are getting their fill. Sucking in good air, listening to birdsong and the loud flow of a river. This was living. Wedge number two, let's do this. Got bloody orange tread on my shoes. Orange fire, orange beard, fire in the belly. <laughs> Think of another couple of shit metaphors, then go to bed, mate. This is the herbs and spices mix. This is exciting as heck. I don't know what, what sort of mix Helen's made here. Jesus, it's um, Pretty potent stuff. No. I'm very pleased with it. It's very good. Helen. Well, I'm opening a pumpkin only restaurant. The only thing you can eat is pumpkin. And then pumpkin flavored beer, pumpkin flavored eggnog, so if there's such a thing. We'll bloody invent shit. We'll invent stuff. <laughs> so that's one restaurant idea. My other restaurant idea is to have famous aeroplane meals from different eras served exactly like they came to you on the plane. See the sort of stuff you think when you just eat pumpkin for a day? <laughs> did you bring along your um, specimen sample, sir? Yes, I did. Oh, it's doing it. It's sizzling. Oh, that sounds good. This could be the best meal yet. I'm salivating. Not gonna lie. I wonder when the novelty will wear off. When I finish the freaking pumpkin, then there's no more novelty. I have sunnies, I have sunscreen. I have a watch to tell me how far I've gone and how one that tells the time. <sighs> Amazingly, having lived here my whole life, I've never been to the highest point. There's a ridiculousness to this. I've been to high points all over the world to see what the views look like. And away we go. I slept pretty, I slept okay. Looked up at the stars and like an awful lot of people thought this is amazing. Little speck of bloody cosmic dust down there in a biological form as a human. Looking up to the sky thinking there is great significance and great insignificance with my life. I like the idea that I'm likely the first bloke that's ever run up this road with an orange briefcase. Dressed in a uh, Harry Potter t-shirt I found at the Salvos. Having consumed already about three kilograms of pumpkin. Pumpkin comes in at around 250 calories a kilogram. So it was safe to say I was a little underdone for energy. This is basic stuff done by a basic man getting more basic by the minute. If I look like I'm a little bit of a dishevelled bastard, that's because I am. I'm going up a steep hill. I got a little bit of a cold. I'm no bloody hero today. We're approaching 30 hours of just pumpkin in the system. So it's a bit of a flat spot. There's no caffeine in the system. 
So yeah, that's the experiment of the pumpkin project. Bo's not going to feel exactly like Bo always feels when he only eats pumpkin. So our mission now is just to find the tallest point in the area. Spin cop. Ah, yes. You know you're on the right path when you see an old computer monitor. There we go. Perfect place to leave a computer monitor. Out in the bush. This is, this is sword grass, by the way. Sword grass. Very sharp. It has an apt name. Oh, it's pretty zippy on the legs. Use my briefcase as a barge. Oh, ah. This might be more peaky than I thought. There it is. Uh, me and my pumpkin are at the highest point on the map. I was going to eat up here, but the wind is blowing its head off, so it's not a great place to start a fire. So uh, I need some calories. I need some purple, awesome calories. Out of my purple, awesome bag. No. See? I'm starting to lose my shit. Orange, awesome calories. Out of my orange, awesome bag. Cheese is Yeah, I've always loved cutting up vegetables. Um, a housemate I live with left this paring knife behind. He was an arsehole, so it was the best part about him living with me. We've got Helen's seasoning, and then olive oil. All right, I'm just gonna shut up and eat because this could be good. Oh, there's a slurry. There's a slurry in the bottom of the plate. Here's a big tip, I will be drinking that slurry. I dare say there's a fair bit of science happening. You know, 30 odd hours in, the body's saying, hey Bodie, guess what mate? You're not operating at full potential. <laughs> there's, a, there's a nice kind of dumbness to me that I don't mind actually, because you're not overly thoughtful or critical of yourself when you're a bit dumb. Because, well, you're dumb. That was awesome, Bo. Good experiment, mate. You in your case. And now I gotta get down. A trait of regular adventuring is to get off the map. Go to its edges or explore sections few people go. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm just uh, coming back to camp. Not stolen. That's a good check. This trip was not that. I was switching out straight lines for circles, happy to be in the eddy of a plug hole, a little aimless. But as the afternoon crept in, it felt strangely like a whole new day and a whole new trip. Something can be said for covering familiar ground. Back on the pushy! Ha! I can feel my ass after being on this thing yesterday. After a couple of days in the bush, I made the startling transition back into farmland. Once mega forest, this is now dairy country. When I was a kid, it was just as famous for growing spuds and even pumpkins. But it's now spruiked by the local shire as being as good for tourism as it is for growing things. Just uh, meeting the locals. Number 44 and I are having a bit of a stare off. I'm heading to an old mate's place, Heath. The same bloke I planted out 1,440 trees for a few years ago. Heath owns an old four cow dairy. It's a beauty. And he has plans to turn it into an Airbnb for city slickers. So, I'm his first guest. I'm going to pay him in pumpkin seeds. He's a sweetheart too. He's left a... Uh, a bucket full of kindling. I did think again about today about um, 
uh, my pumpkin restaurant. I don't think it'll do very well. I think, I think it would do really well for the first couple of months. The novelty, you'd get a whole bunch of people through for the novelty. And then, you know, where are we going tonight, love? Oh, the pumpkin place. Nah, I've been there before. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get many repeat customers. My pumpkin brain and pumpkin body was starting to wane. I think that rhymes. I'll take it. The dumber I get, the more I don't worry about things. <laughs> In many respects, I'm having a worse experience by just eating pumpkin, but it's a different kind of experience. That's what makes it unique. Because if I just set off from home with all sorts of awesome food and went and had an adventure for three days, I probably wouldn't talk much about the food. This is probably the least profound thing I'll ever say, but I think the human relationship to food is the most important relationship we ever have. It often separates the haves and the have-nots more than anything as well. Breakfast of champions. Did you order pumpkin, sir? Yeah, I did, thank you. Didn't you order this yesterday? Yeah, I did. Did you order it the day before? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Morning, mate. Hey, here's the landlord. How are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Gotta bring this along. So I can go for another three days. What an asshole, hey? You are you feeling a bit shit? Just in case, just in case you weren't sick of it already. <laughs> I don't know how many's here. This is just going to be a friend. This is like yeah. friends' rent, you yeah, know. Right. Like you just give your mate a few bucks when I'll you stay um, over on the couch. Thanks, mate. Back on the road, day three. Yeah. Off to see my daughter at her kindergarten and give some seeds away. So I've been out camping for a couple of days. I miss you so much. Six, eight, 10, there's 50, that's funny. I'm in town and I thought I might as well give away pumpkin seeds. I've got bloody heaps of them. I'm giving away pumpkin seeds. You want some pumpkin seeds? Would you like some pumpkin seeds? All right, thank Good you. Good luck. Hey Suze, do you want some pumpkin seeds? It turns out that people love pumpkin seeds. There comes a time in every experimental adventure where you feel like crap. No amount of eating one type of food lifts your energy levels. I've been here before, dumb and energy deprived. This wonderful escapade needed to finish before I wobbled into a ditch. Which means I needed somewhere to leave the bike. Is this bike and stuff okay here, mate? That's good, yep. Lovely. And it's long. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Got more than I bargained for there. I just came to leave a couple of pumpkin seeds and he's given me his kayak. <laughs> Amazing. See what goodness comes? You give the bloke some pumpkin seeds and, you know. I am now just gonna run the next six or seven, maybe eight kilometers into my grand's place. And that's it, I'm just gonna carry the pumpkin. Yeah, me old mate, we're doing well. In my household, I'm the one that eats leftovers. Things going bad and, to be honest, even stuff that's long gone. But even me, willing to eat anything, and my little family of good eaters, we still end up with a bucket full of compost every other day. This pumpkin project is many things, and one of them is my aversion to waste. The reason I'm heading to Gran's place is that one, she gave me my first pumpkin seeds, and two, being a post-war mum of six, she's the least wasteful person I've ever met. <sighs> it's just what's left. I thought you said you were bringing the soup. No, I've got to make it. <laughs> oh my God. Hello, Gran. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You, did you run in? Yeah, I've, oh, I've, been, I've been on the go for three days. 92, she was the first woman to give me seeds. So, 
The idea being, comes full circle, I'll come back here, I'll give you some seeds, we'll bung them in your ground out the back, see what comes of it, and eat the last of the pumpkin. Two wedges, Gran. You gotta eat that wedge, I'll eat that wedge. Oh. As someone who's milked cows for decades, Gran wasn't overly impressed with where I slept. I slept in a four cow dairy last night. Yeah. Tiny little dairy on the other side of Nearham South. Oh Gran insisted I have a cup of coffee and multiple slices of bread with thick butter to go with our world-class soup. That tastes great to me. I'm a bit more bland than you, but that tastes, that with a bit of buttered bread, but Gran, I think we're good. Like she's done with half my family, Gran saved me from myself. What a bloody legend. We divided up the last of the seeds because this experiment needed to live on for hundreds of years. This, my friends, was the Pumpkin Project.